and we are live thank you anthony for joining us so hi guys uh, thanks for joining so this week we have uh, anthony from latency lingo so he is going to take through uh, latency lingo tool uh, features and all things about uh, jmeter reporting so please say hi uh, in the chat so that we know where are you from joining from and also introduce yourself so that i can just put it in the live stream so before we get started as usual uh, we have a sponsor so redline 13 as you know they have been sponsoring us for a pretty long time so if you want to run a high scale load test in your own infrastructure uh, particularly aws using your jmeter test plan so please uh, check it out uh, redline 13 and hi anthony how are you doing hello i'm doing great how about yourself thank you yeah i'm going i'm doing great fine so you you are you're joining from uh, where actually i'm from toronto canada okay cool yeah cool. how's the weather there it's, it's actually quite nice no it's quite nice right now we have a really hot summer uh august is it comes around like 30 degrees celsius so <laughs> pretty warm here yes so i'm i'm uh, i live in cincinnati yeah here also it is uh, summer it's almost 28 degrees celsius <laughs> it's quite nice uh. <laughs> so why not introduce yourself to the uh, q insights audience and then we can get started from there yeah of course hey everyone uh yes yeah, so as mentioned my name is anthony bobson um, I'm a software engineer by trade. I have around seven years of experience. Um, my most recent job, I was working as a staff software engineer at a company called Instacart. Um, so they're focused on a, it's a very large grocery delivery platform, um, mainly from the United States, if you're not familiar. Um, so when I was working there, I was part of a team called Connect. Um, so we managed all of the APIs that we would expose from Instacart to external partners. Um, so a lot of my experience has revolved around um, like backend API development and databases. Um, cool. So that was my previous role. I, I since left in March um, to come and start Latency Lingo, which we'll talk about today. Cool. Hi, Rituraj. Thanks for joining. Cool. So I have used a couple of times Instacart. The, awesome. Uh, service. Great to hear. Yeah. From, I think, from via Costco, I guess. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I was there for so, uh, just over three years. The background. Yes, yes, yes. So what is the uh, uh, motivation behind you quit your job and start something? Yeah, new so job? I've definitely always wanted to do this. It, it was at the back of my mind for a very long time. Um, it was getting around that time at Instacart where I was ready to tackle some new challenges. Um, and over my time at Instacart, I've seen a lot of really big problems at big tech companies that I wanted to solve. Um, with a product that I built. Um, so at Instacart, as I mentioned, I was running a lot of the API development. So we ran a bunch of web performance tests um, for all of our APIs, basically on every single build and on various frequencies. Um, so all of this exposure to performance testing led me to think about latency lingo um, and sort of the timing it made sense for me to leave and, and try, try out building this product. Cool, cool, that's great. Not um, everybody start a journey, right? Uh, leaving nine to five job, yeah, kind of risky, and it needs a lot of uh, you know uh, guidance, motivation from family, support. A lot of things are there. For sure, I couldn't have done it without the support that I've received. Cool, cool. Okay, now let us back to your first uh, product, Latency Lingo. Yeah. So why the name Latency Lingo? What is the meaning behind this? Who named? Yeah. It? So I, I named it. Um, the, the meaning behind it is because uh, whenever I was like running performance tests and trying to educate others about performance tests at Instacart, um, you end up speaking like your own language or your own lingo. And it's very difficult for some people to, to follow on. There is like a, a steep sort of learning period before you can jump in and really have like an educated discussion about how performance tests are doing, what type of coverage you have on your performance tests um, and that sort of lingo, I guess. So latency lingo because we're trying to help you understand uh, your performance tests a lot better cool cool mm -hmm. so uh, definitely you would have uh, come across other uh, solutions right before mm -hmm. you created this tool so what lacks actually what is the uh, in the basic uh, jmeter report right what lacks mm -hmm. and what made you to create this tool yeah so i think there's two uh, solutions uh, two main solutions that i, I would say we're competing with um, the first solution is where a tester is running JMeter by themselves 
and then they start using the like HTML dashboard or the default reporting uh, that comes with JMeter. Um, when using the generated HTML uh, dashboard from JMeter, the problem is it's a static report. Um, it's, it's like an HTML file that you'll have to publish and it's fairly difficult to share um, with team members. And then if you wanna actually document observations for that report, then you'll have to spin off like a separate Google doc and somehow link the two. Um, so it, it just sort of gets very messy when you're dealing with these isolated files. Um, and then I'd say the other side of the solution are these cloud-based performance testing solutions um, like mm -hmm. BlazeMeter, Octoperf, uh, K6 Cloud. Um, so with those types of solutions, you would get a really strong um, reporting platform uh, because all of the metrics are being uh, like managed within this platform. But the problem is that you have to give up the ownership of running your performance tests. Um, so now you're forced to run these performance tests on like blaze meters servers, for example, um, and you lose some of the like ownership over the details. Um, so with latency lingo, the way we're approaching this a bit differently is that um, we're targeting users that actually own the execution of the performance tests, mm -hmm. but allowing them to still access a premium reporting through latency lingo um, by them integrating their open source test runners into the latency lingo platform. That's cool. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you uh, because we have to uh, enroll as a customer to them and we have to uh, execute our tests. Then they will store the data. Exactly. Right? It's kind of a we are, uh, uh, vendor locking, basically. Right. right. Not everybody cool. has that appetite. Yes. Cool. Okay. So we have Uday. Hi, Uday. Thanks for joining. We have Sudarshan. Thanks for joining. You can say hi to my audience. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now, uh, let us talk back to the JMeter reporting, right? So why someone needs to switch to uh, latency lingo like products? Because JMeter, if you see, it gives you some uh, HTML report quickly, just mm -hmm. by running some command, it automatically gives you, and then we can store it in Grafana or other uh, you know, third party or open source solutions, right? We can mm -hmm. host it ourselves within our uh, on-premise. Mm -hmm. So why we need to have something especially for reporting purpose. Yeah. So uh, has anyone asked you this question? Suppose if you are presenting to some uh, vendor, you know, big companies, right? So definitely yeah. they will ask you, right? Yeah, so we, we have the question in our FAQ as well, because we do get it a lot. Um, so we, we are assuming that um, all customers will have like Grafana or Datadog set up for their default app application performance monitoring. Um, and we highly encourage that, that, that sort of, um, like table stakes just to get into performance testing. Um, the way latency lingo approaches this is a layer sort of alongside your default observability platform that is very focused on performance testing workflows. So on um, my previous role, uh, we, we use Datadog very extensively, which is an amazing platform, I'm a huge fan. Um, I think the difficulty is whenever you're setting up uh, all the dashboards, the monitors um, to actually like monitor your performance tests on a recurring basis, you need a fair amount of uh, domain expertise to understand like what types of monitors to set up, how should we actually analyze the results over like the last day, over the last couple of builds, over the last week. Um, so rather than forcing everybody to understand that knowledge in order to like set up their default dashboards and monitors, latency lingo is a way to sort of expedite that whole process, um, get a more simplified version that is set up for you out of the box uh, with the recommended metric views, um, recommended monitors, and we'll sort of walk you through that process to how you should best monitor performance tests specifically, um, rather than forcing you to uh, start with a general observability platform and then try to mold it um, to your performance testing workflow. Cool. So in, in the uh, website, you have mentioned analytics and collaboration, right? So mm -hmm. that is your uh, key selling points, correct? That's correct. So, uh, okay, how powerful the analytics is? I mean, could you just take us through the journey? I mean, you can share your screen, probably. Yeah. You can get started with the demo. Maybe we'll, yeah, we'll start into the demo, and then I'll, I'll talk about the specific analytics that we're, we're looking at. Um, so, yeah, we've covered, I have on the bottom right here, I just have a TXT file. Um, that'll be a rough overview of how, what we'll be covering today. Uh, I'll try to keep it up to date where my cursor is just to help us a bit. 
Um, so we've covered what is latency lingo. Let's sort of get into the demo here. Um, you can navigate to latencylingo.com to follow along just on the website. Uh, we're going to start with the documentation. Um, a lot of this documentation we, we've sort of discussed ad hoc, uh, so but you can feel free to read it yourself. The thing I want to focus on here is this architecture diagram for us for the demo. Um, as mentioned, uh, we're, we're focused on users that are running their own instance of JMeter. Um, with JMeter, you can configure it to generate a uh, a result file uh, that's in the format of a CSV. Um, latency lingo depends on this result file, uh, and, and we'll walk through how to, how to generate this shortly. Um, once we actually generate this result file from JMeter, then we can start sending the CSV over to a latency lingo through both our CLI tool and then our APIs. Um, so that's the process that we're going to go through uh, in this demo today. And we'll keep referring back to this diagram just for clarity. Cool. So we have one question from uh, Rituraj. Yep. I can read for you. So uh, his question is, uh, is it uh, latency link is a completely different tool or something that needs to be integrated with JMeter for reporting? It's the second. It, it will be integrated with JMeter. Um, so we're trying to act alongside your existing tool set like JMeter. Um, we would never try to force you off of JMeter because we're huge fans of the tool. Um, so instead, we will take the output from JMeter and then pipe that into latency lingo. So that will get the, the premium insights. Cool. And the follow-up question, yeah. is it a paid tool or open source? Yeah, so we have both a free um, plan and a paid plan. Um, the free plan is for individual at the moment. Uh, so you can set up an account today, um, sign up and start publishing reports with some fairly generous uh, limitations. Um, and then the paid plan is de dedicated to teams. Um, so once you actually want to start collaborating on these reports with your team members, then you could upgrade to the, the paid plan. Um, it's not open source yet. The, the CLI is open source on GitHub. Um, eventually, I do plan to make portions of it open source. Uh, we're just restricted by the technologies we're using right now. OK. And we have another question from Sudarshan. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we integrate uh, latency lingo in CICD pipeline? Yes, so the latency lingo CLI uh, is just an executable file that you can put on any server, uh, specifically your CI CD servers. Um, and then you could use that CLI to publish directly to latency lingo as part of your build process. That's how we intend for you to use it. Cool. Yeah, that's all uh, right now. Yeah, you can please proceed. And if any questions, I will read out for you. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you. Okay, so at the top right, this is where we'll uh, run our demo. Um, I also have JMeter running. Um, so I created a very basic test plan for the purposes of this demo. Uh, we can see it on the left-hand side in JMeter. Uh, let me try to make this a bit bigger. Okay. So as I mentioned, this test plan is very simple. Um, we set up one thread group. It has 50 users. Um, it has a 15 second ramp up period, and it's just going to run for two minutes. Um, within this, we have two different requests that will be executed. Um, what I have set up is just a little local server that I'm hitting for the purpose of this demo. Um, it just simulates various response times for us. Um, so this first one is just hitting the root of this server I have running. Um, and the second one, it's also hitting the root, but it's passing in this parameter to configure how the response time is calculated or simulated. So just two requests in here, and then we have uh, our summary report here. Um, we want to write the results of this performance test to a file called demo result one uh, .csv. Are there any questions about this before I move on? Just feel free to. Um, no, Anthony. Yeah, please proceed. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run this test. We can see it gets a little squished when I zoom in, but. We'll see the results slowly coming in. So while that's running, this will run for two minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and install the latency lingo CLI. Is it a platform agnostic, uh, the latency lingo, uh, the tool? Yes. Yeah, so it's a, the CLI is written in Golang. And Golang has a very nice build process that allows us to generate it for uh, all the operating systems. Cool. Um, so under CLI installation, um, we can see here, this is the actual GitHub repository for the CLI. 
if you would like to dig into the source code. Um, and all the releases are attached to this GitHub repository. Um, so you'll actually download like the release from here. I have a little snippet here for how to download it for um, OS X. So I'll run that. Um, what it's doing is finding the specific release download. In this case, it's version 1.2.0 um, for the correct build um, and then unzipping that file. So let's copy this over. We'll download that into our demo folder. So now you can see we have this execu executable called latency lingo DLI. Um, so if you go ahead and run this, um, and it will just give you like, a description from the tool. Oops. Okay, so we can check in on our JMeter test that we had running in the background. Yeah, it is very easy to install. Just one command. Uh, yeah. That, right? Yeah, thanks for that. So that is, you know, yeah, no need to set any environment variables, something like that. Nothing, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Good. This should be just wrapping up. Let's give it another 10 seconds or so. So those who joined from LinkedIn, uh, I cannot see your questions. So please uh, write your questions. Probably after the session, I can just go through. Or you can join the YouTube stream so that you can post your questions live. OK, so we can see that our test now finished in JMeter. And as we configured it to write to this file, um, we now see that file uh, created here for us. Um, if we open up the file, for those unfamiliar, we'll see the rough formatting. Um, you can see it's a CSV, and it has a number of different headers for us to parse. So now that we have this file um, and we've downloaded the CLI, now we want to set up a latency lingo account so that we can attach any test reports that we publish to our latency lingo account. So we'll go back here. We have a question from Vijay. Again, I think you already answered this, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding open source or licensed one. So if you can repeat it yeah. for Vijay, it would be great. Yeah, at the moment, the entire platform is not open source. Uh, only our CLI tool is open source at the moment. And there are uh, free and paid versions to use a product. The free version is for a single user uh, to play around with it with some limitations. Um, the paid version is for teams uh, to share reports and collaborate on reports together. OK, uh, so here I signed up. You just watched me go through the sign up flow. Um, we'll go into the UI with this dashboard uh, later on. But for now, you can see that we have no uh, performance test reports published yet. Let me get it bigger. Um, and then this will take us to the documentation. But I'm here, so I'll read the documentation today. Um, we'll need our API key uh, to publish uh, to our specific account. So we go here, copy our API key. And then that's all we need from the UI for now. So we can go back into uh, using the latency lingo CLI. So we can uh, rotate our keys, right? Something if happens. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so right here, we'll be able to rotate the key. So I'll be rotating it after the demo. <laughs> OK, cool. Um, OK, so within our CLI, um, you can follow along in the documentation for, for more details. Uh, but we just have a single publish command for now. Um, this is the single command that will um, accept the CSV file that we generated from JMeter, um, parse it into data points that are accepted by Latency Lingo, and then publish all of those data, data points over to Latency Lingo APIs. Um, and then once they're actually published to these APIs, we'll be able to uh, view all those metrics within the latencylingo.com uh, UI. So publish. We can see the publish command. It takes a few arguments. Um, the first argument here is the file. So that will just be a reference to the file that we generated. Um, the second argument here is for a label. Um, so this is what we want to call the test scenario that we're running. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that later when we look at it in the UI. 
And then lastly, it's our API key uh, that we just copied uh, from our account settings. So let's go ahead and run that command. File. Uh, so recall is demo result one. That's Label. Let's try to uh, test report. Demo one. And then for API key, I copied that earlier um, from the account settings. So there it is. Uh, we published that. And then while that is publishing, I want to run another report uh, that we'll use later. Uh, so I'm just going to run this again to demo result two. Okay. So we'll have it running in the background again. So back to our CLI, we can see all the output that it gave it to us. Um, it parsed the specific file that we specified. It created this report. Uh, this is the unique identifier published some data points and summarization rows, and then it gives us a link here uh, to our actual report that was created. Chrome. So the URL we got is the private URL, correct? That's correct. Um, so because we're passing in the API key, uh, this report is private to the specific account associated to that API key. We also have a method where if you don't pass in the API key, it's a public report. Um, sort of hidden in the documentation right now because we're figuring out how to sell that exactly. But for now, we're pushing more people to use the API key just so it's easier to track down. Cool. Okay, so this yeah, is the link some, that we is, have some uh, questions oh, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. Sorry, I, uh, we uh, we got some questions. Probably after your uh, uh, this demo, I can go through that. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so on the left hand side here, this is the report that we see uh, for the test that we ran. Um, this is the label that we specified when publishing the file. Um, this is our start and end times for when we um, fired off the test. Then we have some high level metrics, the total requests, failures, uh, duration, uh, fairly straightforward. This is just for a quick overview of what's going on in the test results. Um, then under test plan, we could see these labels here are all the different operations that we included within our JMeter test plan. Um, so we can have those side by side, maybe helpful. This case a um, sampler name, right? Exactly. It's this name right here. And then home page different source. Cool. Make this a bit bigger. Okay. Um, we'll talk about observations later on. We'll just focus on the metrics for now. Um, summary stats. Uh, this shows metrics broken down by um, operation. Uh, and also just overall statistics. Um, this breakdown gets fairly complicated when talking about percentiles. Um, it's something that I've, I've faced issues in the past, but whenever you're talking about percentiles, those percentiles have to be calculated very specifically for any um, like dimensions that you're talking about and also within a specific like, time window. Um, so we make sure to calculate these accurately for you uh, for each operation. And then we'll have some basic like metric views here um, for to show you what we think is most important uh, within this performance test. Um, so we'll see just requests uh, broken down by every single operation along with the overall. Um, below here, we have response times. Um, the default unit is in milliseconds. And then we can toggle all the different operations here uh, so that we can dive in a bit deeper. And then virtual users, this will also show us the ramp up. Uh, in this case, we didn't have a ramp down for our test, but you can visualize that as well. Um, so yeah, I can stop there for now to, to answer the questions, uh, and then I can continue on. Yeah, cool. So first question is from uh, Kapi Reddy, Gauri Ravindra. So uh, suppose if you are running a test in uh, a master worker configuration for a very high load testing, right? So is there a way we can directly integrate the latency lingo? Yes, at the moment, unfortunately, we can't support that. Um, the size of the test of the result files are currently limited to 100 megabytes. Um, we're hard at work in a actually a pretty large refactor of our data store to increase these limits. Um, but those are the, the current limitations, unfortunately. Um, we did talk about introducing a JMeter listener that might make this a lot easier for, for, for your situation. Um, it hasn't been prioritized yet, but I'd love for you to reach out and we can, we can talk about the use case uh, in more detail. Cool. 
and we have question from uh, Krishnamurthy. So is there any limit in generating reports per day with free plan? Yeah, so we can see the limits on the home page under pricing uh, right here. So one user, uh, it's 15 hours of test reports per month. So that sums up the duration of every single test. Um, every test has a time limit of 20 minutes under the free version. Um, and there's only a two week uh, data retention. Um, these are all subject to change. It's a fairly new product, but this is what we're uh, sitting on right now. Um, once you upgrade to Pro, then the, all those limits actually increase. If you need any uh, limits above this, uh, like please reach out. Um, we don't have an official enterprise version yet, but I'm happy to try to accommodate. So, okay, I got a question. When you publish your data points, right? Mm -hmm. So where it is getting stored, uh, which uh, cloud provider you are using? Suppose I have a customer who don't want to store my data in certain regions. Mm -hmm. So is there any way to customize that as of now? Not at the moment. Um, so right now for metrics, we're storing them in Superbase, which internally is like a Postgres instance running on AWS. Um, in the future, I, I do try to want to try to move towards self-hosting because uh, speaking from experience, like I understand that this data is, it can be very sensitive. Um, may want not want to store that on someone else's server. Um, for now, we, we unfortunately don't support that. Um, all the data is being stored within Superbase in a Postgres instance. So which region it, it is hosted? I need to look at the default Superbase. I believe it's US East 1. In US East 1, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have a question from Sudarshan. Uh, how about uh, application metrics or APM integration container metrics? Can we also see it here? You know, we're not there yet, unfortunately. Um, that's definitely in the vision to, to build fairly deep integrations with Datadog, for example. Um, for now, we're still just really focused on uh, the performance test in isolation before we can really start um, building integrations with the rest of your workflows. Cool. So how many data points you tested, uh, Anthony? I mean, how many uh, rows of records you tested this? Yeah, so the max files, in terms of internal testing, um, I've gotten up to, I believe, just under 500 megabytes. So that's the current limitation. Um, I'm still trying to increase it. Uh, for example, if we can see here, all the different data points are actually aggregated by like five second intervals so that we can see them on the graphs here. Um, we can get a bit more creative with what type of rollup periods we have for the different data points. Um, we just have to be cautious that we still have a granular enough rollup period to, to derive insights. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the largest file currently is just under 500 megabytes. Um, the, the public limit is still 100 megabytes for files to give us a bit of buffer as, as we keep increasing that. But definitely listen more uh, so that we can sorry, follow along so that we'll, we'll, you'll find out how much we increase it over the next couple of months. So if we compare the uh, JMeter report uh, with the summary status, it would be identical, right? Or do we lose some data points? It will be identical. Um, okay. That's so the very important part of um, having access to the entire input file all at once so that we can accurate, accurately calculate uh, these summary metrics. OK, so you implemented your own algorithm uh, to calculate uh, these stats, or it's a JMeter algorithm? It's my own algorithm. Okay. Yeah, there's a Golang language that I'm using within the CLI. Um, for, for those interested, I, I highly recommend diving into the code for the CLI. That's where a lot of the actual metrics are, are being calculated um, because we want to calculate them on the client side before publishing them up to the server, um, which is part of our plan to, to continue to increase the size of these reports by calculating them on the client side. We save a lot of resources on the server. Got it. So we have got another question from Rituraj. Any possibility we can monitor our load tests live or it, it a complete JTL oriented plugins? Yeah, not yet. Unfortunately, this is similar to the, uh, we also wanted to build like a listener for this that would just plug in right into JMeter um, and then it will emit the metrics live to us so we can adjust them. Um, we're just not there yet. Uh, we're, we're still focused on the um, CSV input. Okay, cool. So, uh, can we go through the uh, other features, that, uh, yep. collaboration features? For sure. 
So as you notice here in the, in the report, um, there's observations both attached at the overall test run level, um, but also within specific charts as well. Um, so here, the way we intend for this to be used is for um, whoever's sort of reviewing this report can go in. Um, in a lot of cases, I've seen teams defining like service level objectives uh, for their various requests. So in this case, for homepage, um, as a team, we might enforce a service level objective of uh, a P90 latency being less than four seconds. Um, if we had that in place, then this 4.4 seconds uh, would have breached our SLO. Um, so then we would go in here and say, like, miss SLO uh, for homepage um, of P90 less than uh, four seconds. It's like so, a captain's log, right? Yeah, exactly. Because like what I found when I was analyzing all these performance test reports is that I would just have a fairly lengthy Google Doc and it becomes very difficult to, if you're copying chart links of specific timestamps and trying to explain what's happening within a different Google Doc. Um, so our intention with this is to bring both the uh, investigation uh, together with where the metrics actually live. So that it's just one location to, have to access everything. Um, once we actually create this observation here, like you can mark it as in different statuses. Um, for example, this one will be a failure because we missed the SLO. Um, but then we might have another one where we pass, uh, then we can maybe make it as a success. Um, this is our intention with observations. Uh, sort of, this is a very basic version at the moment. Um, what we're working towards are um, like inputting SLOs within the platform, and we'll have automated insights that creates uh, some basic observations for you. Um, and then you as a user can go in and, and augment it with your own observations as well. Um, but for now, it's, it's very manual. Cool. Because when I was playing, uh, I didn't know that we can change the status. I thought it's yeah. just a button uh, pending. Probably you have mm -hmm. to tweak that uh, UI a little bit. I do. Yeah, <laughs> that will be a rework in, in the next month for observations. Cool. So we can add observations in any place, right? Wherever we like. Uh, That's correct. So you can attach observations to requests as well. Um, there was a consistent uh, increase during ramp up or bottlenecks, for example. And this will be successful. Um, and these will like stay to those specific requests. Um, another feature we have in the pipeline is, is attaching these observations to specific timestamps. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's still fairly early on. <laughs> Um, so what, remember before, uh, when I ran a second test, um, let's go ahead and use that test now. Um, so if we go back to our CLI, uh, so we generated this result file too. Let's run the same publish command with this result file too. Um, so for this, actually, yeah, we'll navigate. To, oops, sorry, open to my wrong Chrome window. There you go. Okay, so this is the second report. Um, we'll see like it's very similar overall, but there'll be some differences because of how latency was simulated. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, they're actually fairly identical. Some, okay, um, but yeah, what I'm trying to show here is now that we have two different reports under a similar label, um, we're implicitly documenting that they're two reports for the same test run. Um, and if you notice before, we have this report ID to help compare reports here. Um, let's try comparing the two reports that we, that we just generated. Um, so we'll take the older report, which I believe is this one. Yeah, so this report was run first. We'll copy this ID and then we'll paste it into uh, this input field in the following report and we'll make this a bit bigger. Um, so what that did was fetch all the summary stats for the report ID that we specified 
um, it lets us know here like which report that we are comparing it with. So in this case, we're now we're comparing report two with report one, and it will give you some uh, input on how the trends are, are looking uh, for every single uh, summary stat metric that we have here. Um, so as an example, we can see this P99 latency overall, um, it actually increased by 20% and it's now eight seconds. Um, so as a user looking at this, uh, I might need to investigate that specific trend. Um, so yeah, I just want to give a quick demo. Comparison. Yeah, that's yes, correct. Sir. Right now we can only compare two reports. Okay. So if we click on that button, uh, summary stats, right? That one, so it will take us to the world report. That's correct. And it actually includes, it basically reverses it. So it takes you to the old report and now we're comparing it with two. Okay, okay, smart. Yeah. So these manipulations are, uh, it's being uh, done at the client side or it's from the server side? Uh, these manipulations are on the client side. Uh, so we Thanks have sir. to fetch, we fetch the summary stats for the other report and do a simple uh, comparison between the two numbers. Okay. So one thing I didn't show earlier uh, was the dashboard. Um, so here's our current version of the dashboard. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's still really basic. Um, it's worth mentioning here that I'm actually working on a V2 a UI overhaul. Um, so expect to hear more about that next week. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, this is the dashboard. Uh, we, it tells us how many uh, test runs there were. So in our case, during this demo, we ran two, um, and how many virtual users there were over all the tests. And then we can just have a list here of every single test that we ran, and we can delete the, the reports if we like, um, or just drill in to each of the each of the reports that we viewed earlier. Can we download our report? Uh, no, we, we don't have that feature right now. Okay. But yeah, please, uh, please let me know if that's a, a feature that you would like. Um, yeah, I hope it goes without saying. We're very, very open to feedback, and we appreciate any feedback uh, from the community. Um, and at this stage, especially, we're we're extremely receptive. So. Yeah, Ritura just saying that oh, thank you. a very nice feature to compare two reports. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Okay, Abdullah. Uh, I think we have all, already answered this, but still, I will just go through. Is there any premium version of this product? Or on premise, right? Um, sorry, on sorry, sorry, on premise. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Uh, not at the moment. Uh, we are trying to work towards having a self hosted version. Um, there are just some parts of our technology uh, that are unable to be self hosted at the moment. Um, so as we continue to, to rework our data models, which is what we're doing with our, our V2 right now, um, we're getting closer and closer to supporting on premise. Uh, just don't have that support today. Cool. So what is next for latency lingo? Mm -hmm. What are exciting Let's features uh, you are going to introduce? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, in case you missed it at the beginning, uh, this is a very early product. Uh, I've been working on it for um, about four or five months, uh, but our vision is much, much bigger than this. Um, our, our vision, so yeah, I'll highlight this roadmap for the one I'm talking about now. Um, the overall vision is to plug into many other open source test runners other than JMeter. Um, JMeter is just extremely mature and has a very, very large community behind it. Um, and people were very valuable feedback. Um, so we're focusing on that first, uh, but all the APIs that we created are generalized so that we can plug it into uh, tools like Gatling and Locust and K6. I think those three would be next up. Um, so that's sort of our overall vision, just to support many different uh, open source load test runners. Um, the other portion of our vision is to lean more into automation. Um, I think one of the biggest time spent in the past is, is just going through like all the automated performance tests that are running, um, figure out how the trends are, are looking uh, for every single operation. Um, and like whenever you're automating these performance tests, there's just so much data being generated. Um, that it can be very overwhelming um, to sort of parse all of that. Um, we really want to focus on trying to remove some of that manual burden. Um, so as you can see here, automated insights is very high on our list. Um, that was dependent on the V2 rewrite that I referenced earlier. Um, so our V2 rewrite is launching next week. Uh, it completely changes how we're, how we're storing our data so that we can now allow 
much, much more advanced queries uh, to, to reveal these insights for you. Um, and that sort of foundation of, of V2 is going to like unlock a, a bunch of other features coming in the next few months. Um, so a third here is around error logs. Um, we don't currently capture all the individual errors that happened. Uh, I think that's extremely important to capture, but we don't have it yet. Um, so the idea here is that we will capture those individual errors and we can display that in the report. Um, following that, I'm going to uh, come back to observations. Um, as I mentioned, it's still a very basic implementation. Uh, we want to attach observations to specific timestamps. Um, and these observations will actually be automatically created for you as part of the automated insights initiative as well. Um, so once we have automated observations coming in alongside user observations, there is going to be a, a rework that has to be has to take place there just to uh, improve that workflow a bit. Um, and then lastly, uh, we're improving views on trend um, related to your question about just comparing one report. Uh, it's definitely not enough. Um, our vision is so that you can actually compare all reports over the last like 30 days, for example, um, and really start understanding trends over time, um, rather than just looking at a single or two reports uh, in isolation. Um, so that's where we're heading. Definitely a lot of work to be done, but we're very happy with how far we've come so far. Um, and if there's any specific uh, features that you're looking for that I haven't mentioned yet, please, please reach out. Um, we're always looking for feedback. Cool. So uh, what is the next tool you mentioned, a K6 or Locust or both V2? So we're deciding between three. Uh, there's K6, Locust, and Gatling. Um, when it comes down to building those integrations, we're just going to talk with users extensively uh, to help mm -hmm. prioritize. Um, right now, I'm leaning towards K6 uh, because I was a huge fan of K6 in my, in my last role as well. Um, but really, it, it comes down to, uh, at that time, what users want the most. But but if you if you think about from a business perspective, right? Mm -hmm. See, K6 or Gatling, they have a, a premium offering, correct? That's correct. So definitely, yeah. they will have some better reporting uh, compared to whatever you are going to start from scratch, correct? I completely agree. Yeah. I but think, uh, uh, if you take a Locust, a Locust doesn't have any premium uh, version, so probably mm -hmm. I would <laughs> focus on uh, Locust uh, instead of uh, other tools. Yeah, that's a great point. I think that when I was evaluating all of them, Locust has a slight difference in how it generates the, the result files, but we can definitely work around that. Yeah, I think it, it is use, it is using a, a Python requests library. Mm -hmm. So the calculation is kind of a little different uh, than yeah. other tools. Yeah. So probably yeah, have to put that recommendation. <laughs> That's a good point. And yeah, K6 Cloud especially is, is an amazing product. So <laughs> yes. a lot of competition there. I'm actually yes, taking yeah. a lot of inspiration from a K6 Cloud when designing a reporting insights. Um, I don't think K6 Cloud should be limited to one people that use K6, but also people that are willing to pay that hefty fee. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm trying to take some some of those features and provide them to people that run their own performance tests with open source test runners. Yes. So last week I published one uh, video in my channel, uh, Gigaworm Cloud Performance Report uh, Analysis. Mm -hmm. So that reports, uh, the analyst uh, states that uh, Grafana, they have already their own uh, machine learning algorithms and other AI features, right? So yeah. they will probably integrate with uh, K6 for yeah. better uh, uh, reporting. Yeah, uh, I think that acquisition was very interesting. Yes. Very smart. So, <laughs> yeah, pro yeah, you can do K6, but uh, probably it will take more time to reach to their level. Yeah. That's a very good so, point. <laughs> I'll definitely yeah. consider that. But uh, yeah, Locust, again, it's a different game, actually. And it's extremely popular as well, similar to k yeah. Again, Gatling, they have a Gatling cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. So they have their own offerings, uh, right? So that ecosystem, yeah. again, it's pure JVM ecosystem. But yeah, whatever you're headed, it is right, uh, Anthony. I mean, you are just focusing on the niche, right? It's a JVM yeah. reporting yeah. Uh, niche. So not much tools are available. Uh, only tool I know is uh, uh, 10 years ago, I, I remember a Blaze Sense. I mm -hmm. don't know whether you heard about this or not. I have, yeah. Yeah, Blaze Sense was the only there. But the UI and all, it's kind of a legacy uh, UI, mm -hmm. the interaction, the UX features and all. Then I started something on my uh, side project uh, called J-Report. I already mentioned. 
yeah. but i i never release it so it's still in my private repo uh, yeah i didn't get a chance to work on that <laughs> yeah i have a lot of uh, projects in my graveyard <laughs> as well i completely understand but you are just uh, dedicated i mean you are on right track thank you and yeah the blaze sense uh, it's funny you mentioned that like i found that super interesting when i was evaluating competitors um but they just stopped marketing it i'm not really sure what's happening in terms of product support there you still yeah. can actually go through Taurus and then like generate a result file to get published to Blaze Meter and it's sort of a similar version to what Blaze Sense was, but I'm not sure what they're they're doing with that. Yeah, I that think uh, they closed the signups uh, long back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I still have a login uh, with me. I did not <laughs> delete it <laughs> because sometimes uh, I may use it. But yeah, anyway, yeah, right now I have your tool. <laughs> Probably, Hopefully, yeah. I fill that gap. Yes. So we have a couple of questions from again mm -hmm. uh, Rituraj. So in JMeter we have plugins manager where we download the jar file and import to JMeter. Any plan of creating something for like mm -hmm. Lingo? Yeah. So I was planning on building a listener, which I think fits this description, um, that you could just install this specific listener and then it will automatically start emitting metrics. Um, the struggle right now is how we're taking the CSV as a whole and deriving metrics based on that, um, that's a bit different. Like with a listener, we would have to publish the individual data points out and then have that aggregation happening on the server. Um, so I'm still wrestling between how we should best design this, um, but I, I definitely think a listener uh, is, is coming up on the roadmap, just need to technically figure out how to make it possible. Cool, cool. So Sudarshan is saying all the best to Anthony for features and evolution. Thank you so much. And Adituraj, doing really great anthony i wish you all the best thank you such a nice community cool so probably once uh, after uploading the report i mean the data points once we launch the url we have to see everything i mean where is the bottleneck uh, mm -hmm. where it is lacking uh, the key points so just a one stop for I mean, exactly uh, reporting purpose right? exactly it takes a while to get there but that's definitely the vision and i'm focusing on it and it's so nice, like how many great tools there are out there to take inspiration from. Um, like, I, again, I got to reiterate, like Datadog has taught me so much in terms of observability and how to approach mm -hmm. it. Um, so it is great to, to take a lot of inspiration from these great tools that exist today. I think you forgot to mention one more feature, which is uh, Slack integration. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so I can show. Yeah, so any plans to integrate uh, like email or uh, other uh, APIs, third-party APIs, webhooks, something like that? Uh, it's lower on the priority list right now. Um, but if specific users uh, feel that need, just reach out and we can we can figure out what to do about the priority. Um, for now, yeah, let's look at the Slack integration. Um, so the idea of the Slack integration is to inform a specific Slack channel whenever a new performance test report was created through Latency Lingo. Um, so how that works is within your account settings, uh, you can actually go through and access your Slack integration um, tab there. Um, you can walk through the at the Slack like OAuth flow. Um, it will make you sign in to your Slack workspace and select a specific channel where you want Latency Lingo to post to. And then once that's set up, here is an example of the message, uh, fairly basic, but the most important thing is just to let you know that a new report is created and give you a way to jump to it very quick. Um, so as you can see here, it, it just sends a simple message that says this report is created and here is a link uh, where you can find the details. Yeah, yeah once nice we, right? thank you. It's nice yeah, we're really going to lead into integrations really heavily once our V2 is out um, because I, I think integrations is what makes what can make this workflow a lot more simple. Um, as I mentioned, like a lot of the pain points in the past was just jumping between all these different tools um, to really understand what's happening. Um, so we're definitely going to focus on integrations very heavily over the next year. Good. So what's your team size, Anthony? Everybody will be interested to know. <laughs> yeah, it's just myself. <laughs> so when I say we, it's probably just a habit. Uh, but yeah, for now, it's just myself. Um, I started working on this in March after I left Instacart. Um, I've always wanted to sort of bootstrap my own company by myself and see how far I can take it before I reach out to others. 
Um, for those that missed my background, um, I was working as a software engineer for, for over seven years. Um, now I'm taking a step into entrepreneurship with Lean Lingo. Um, so yeah, just myself for now, hoping to expand later on, but for now I'm managing it well. <laughs> Hope you don't get burned out uh, by spending yeah. a lot of code. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be cautious. Yeah, long term, right? It's not uh, sustainable. Exactly. We have to form a team. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, and then I guess the, to wrap up here, um, I just want to like sort of send out like I recommend everybody try it out. Um, please sign up. Start creating reports. It's free to, to start using it. Um, if you enjoy it, you can share it with your team, uh, but please just reach out to me and, and provide any feedback that you may have, uh, whether negative or positive, um, in this stage of the journey, it's extremely important to receive feedback. So I appreciate all, everything that users give to me. <laughs> cool. So how, how do we, how can we reach out to you? Uh, yeah. In LinkedIn or any email? Yeah. So my Twitter is at Anthony Bobson, uh, LinkedIn. It's yeah, let me get the links. Is there a place where I can paste this in a chat or somewhere? Maybe, maybe yeah, I can add it in the description. Uh, probably after this video stream is done. Okay, got it. Yeah, so they'll be there. Um, but the two best places are uh, on Twitter. I, I post there, I tweet there at least once a day about my whole journey of uh, latency lingo. Um, so if you want to learn more about what's happening behind the scenes, I recommend you follow me there. Um, Latent Slingo also has a, a Twitter as well. I'm not as active on there, but I hope to be in the near future. Um, and then we have a company page for Latent Lingo that I'd love for you to, to follow. Um, and you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and then my email is this. Um, and there's a bunch of like links in the landing page to, to say like reach out. And all of them are forwarding to, to an email directly to me. Um, so if you ever want to reach out, just, just send me an email. And I'll, I'll respond to it very quickly. And of course, for any uh, bugs reporting. Yeah, please do. <laughs> cool. So any questions, guys? So please uh, post in the chat. We are almost uh, done with this today's weeks. Probably after six months, we can have you back again, Anthony, and see where latency lingo is headed towards. I can't wait. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know I see uh, the UI is uh, it's changed, right? The user interface uh, since I logged yeah. in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Today, it's a different uh, uh, what is it, uh, <laughs> accent color has changed. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of work both on V2 and just like rebranding uh, leads like overall. You are designing yourself, or it's like a freelancing. Oh, it's by myself. Uh, I, okay. I designed it all as well. Yeah, I started with a, a like a boilerplate that helped me get up and running, uh, and then I okay. did all the design cool. myself from there. Yeah, we have to maintain the website, application, documents, <laughs> GitHub. There's so There's many things lot. you have to <laughs> focus. Yeah, I finally found a nice rhythm at least, but definitely at the beginning it was it was quite overwhelming. Cool. Okay, anything else, uh, Anthony, uh, to share to our uh, audience? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you uh, so much for, for all your time um, and thanks for listening to me. And, and I hope you follow along with this journey of latency lingo. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, uh, many thanks, Anthony, for creating such a tool. It's it's kind of a filling the void in reporting uh, uh, niche, particularly for uh, geometry like tools. Uh, I hope uh, this tool takes uh, like uh, milestones, like AI and other integrations right yeah. uh, in probably in next uh, six to one year uh, mm -hmm. we will be seeing a different uh, flavor of latency lingo definitely probably you can add more charts graphs and uh, other uh, ux related improvements mainly the integrations and uh, like uh, we have to stream our report on the fly so mm -hmm. that's what people will expect uh, yeah the, especially the, I'm curious to hear from, from any community members that want to reach out. I guess there's like a one question that I have. Um, when you're generating these files, maybe like how, how large is your file like on average? Uh, I think that would help a lot in terms of like my, my decisions when designing the system. So yeah, how large are your GTL files that are generated mm -hmm. by JMeter? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that question, yeah, probably you can uh, 
kind of come up with some kind of poll or some collection mm-hmm. the feedback right actually if i have seen some kind of a millions of records from my experience because yeah. we run like a 5000 dps 10000 dps uh, easily yeah so it I've generates like millions of records yeah. we cannot even open in the editor <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have to use uh, oh. we have to split that file we have to open the thing in editor just to see uh, any uh, anything is wrong or not yeah probably you have to yeah. take to the next level uh, the processing thing yeah it should be exciting to solve that problem that's why i, I can't actually tell it to my previous colleagues at instacart yet because similar thing mm-hmm. our reports were too large <laughs> there yes, for most yes. of the cases so mainly the uh, distributed load testing uh, will have yeah. lots of records yeah cool uh, thank you guys thank you everyone for joining uh, we will see uh, next week with a different topic and uh, we'll wish you best to anthony uh, so that uh, i think latent lingo will be a important tool in jmeter uh, ecosystem yeah thank you so much everyone have a good thank you day. have a nice weekend uh, see you bye thank you too bye